have to, have to be patient. Uh, the first of our last three speakers is someone, a lot of you may know him, some of you may be hearing him for the first time. Tariq Ali is a writer. Um, the likes are on the phone of NATO uh, and its warmongering and the drive to war that we've seen uh, in, in, re in recent years. Please welcome Tariq Ali. You already have. Henry Kissinger's <laughs> This ideologue of the American Empire, <laughs> worshipped in the media today, was responsible through his advice and his organizing for coup d'etats. So they're celebrating in Chile, where he organized the coup d'etat that brought Pinochet into power and lost the lives of tens and tens of thousands of socialists, trade unionists, communists, <laughs> left intellectual students. So bye bye and good riddance, Kissinger. <laughs> he was totally supportive of the coup d'etat in Indonesia, which brought a semi fascist general to power and organized the massacre of over a million and a half. Communist members of the PKI, the Communist Party of Indonesia, their supporters, their sympathizers, their cultural organizations. So when we talk of genocide, there's a long record there of what the United States and its people have done. And you know, the, the, the day Kissinger died, I got a phone call from New York. <laughs> There's a pro-Palestinian demo going on, quite large, quite large. And a friend of mine who was on it said, Tariq, I'm on the uh, demonstration on Palestine and Kissinger's died. I said, no, I've just seen that. And he said, can you hear? And people cheering. And he then said, we've just put our Palestinian banners down for a bit and we're dancing on the streets to celebrate. <laughs> they actually danced on the streets of New York to celebrate Kissinger's death. And that is internationalism. <laughs> so there is a long, long record of what the United States have been up to. And every single time they invade a country, they lie about it, or what has happened. They build up huge propaganda networks to lie on their behalf. And never has this been as strong, the lies that they've been telling, as in the case of Palestine. Why? Because they know full well that in taking away Palestinian lands, in driving out the Palestinians in 1948. And some of the most capable Israeli historians have now demonstrated there. It wasn't the Palestinians running away. They were driven out in 1948. And they finally accepted a division. <coughs> but who was not satisfied with the division? Were the Israelis. So it's not a question of the Palestinian organizations driving them out. It's the Israelis who now want the mythological greater Israel which never existed. Never. Not even in the Old Testament if you read it closely, which they play. And they say we want it all. We will not share. That is what they said. Every time they tried to move forward. They were backed by the West, except in the <coughs> uh, late 50s, when the American president, Eisenhower, gave an ultimatum to the Israelis occupying Gaza. 
1857, I think, if my memory is right. And Eisenhower said, I want your troops out of Gaza. I want you to get out of Gaza. They protested. He said, if you don't get out of Gaza, we will impose sanctions on Israel. <laughs> this is an American president. The point I'm trying to make is that when they want to, they can do it. They might have to do it if the situation in the Middle East deteriorates. I have no doubts about that. They do ultimately what is in their own interests as an empire. That has always been their position, and that remains their position. In all these arguments, we've heard them before. When the <laughs> Vietnamese National Liberation Front was bombing cafes in Saigon, cafes inhabited by U.S. soldiers and their hangers-on, they were called terrorists. And the Vietnamese said very publicly and openly, we bomb them because you're there. If you get out of Vietnam, the bombings will stop. The Algerian National Liberation Front said exactly the same thing, saying, yes, our women militants go and put bombs underneath tables where French people are sitting. We won't say sorry. Get out. And when the French journalists questioned them further and said, you justify it. And the FNL leader talking to the press <coughs> said, look, bad things happen when countries are occupied. We're not proud of this. But why don't you give us an air force so we can bomb with more precision? <laughs> <coughs> That's what they said. So every single liberation movement has, you know, no resistance is pretty. We said this before and we say it again. And those of us in solidarity are not obliged to support every single measure taken by whatever resistance movement. That is their policy, that is their line, that is how they defend the country. We don't have to support every tactic, and we don't. But by and large, what we do say is that in case of struggles against imperialism, we take sides. In the struggle... In the Algerian struggle, we were for the FNL, come what may. In the Vietnamese struggle, we were for the Vietnamese to win. Though there was a bit, a bit of a debate on this as to whether we should be or not within the left. But we won that debate, I think, and more importantly, the Vietnamese won that war. Let's not forget that. Huge defeat inflicted on the American Empire. <coughs> by the Vietnamese people. And Palestine, it's the same. When I'm asked which side are you on, I say I'm on the side of the Palestinians. Full stop. That's all you have to say. We're not neutral, at least I'm not, and many people here aren't. We're not neutral, we take sides. In the struggle the Palestinians have been waging now, since the Six Day War, to be precise, very hard struggle, we are on their side. We were on their side even before that, many of us. And we will remain on their side because we know that their side is right. What are they demanding? Either an independent state or a single state solution, which we know both are difficult. Both are difficult. Because a single state solution means living under an apartheid state, discriminated <coughs> against on every level. And an independent state without the settlers being sent away, someone said earlier, sent back home. <coughs> well, in many cases, this wasn't meant offensively. Their home is not that far away. A few transport planes will take them back to Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> or a 
anywhere or back into Israel proper that was agreed. So it's, um, it's a fairly straightforward business and one element was that during the Vietnam struggle, the Vietnamese said to us what is extremely important to defeat this empire is the solidarity movement abroad. Do whatever you can. Mm -hmm. And not just us here, but the Americans did it. The United States anti-war movement was one of the largest and most significant anti-imperialist movements in US history. Soldiers get demonstrating outside the Pentagon saying, we want Ho Chi Minh to win. GIs in their uniforms and their crutches saying, we want the other side to win. And <clears throat> two things very briefly, if you permit me. In Israel, there was a strong layer of people who did similar things. In 2003, a very courageous Israeli journalist, Nuriel, his name was Yehuda Nuriel, a Sephardic Jew, did had a column in a large newspaper, a satirical column, <coughs> and he, Yut, and several Israeli pilots had refused to bomb outside Israel. They said, we're not bombing the occupied land. We, we joined the Air Force to bomb to defend ourselves, not to go and kill Palestinians. They refused to bomb. They were mistreated, their kids were spat on at school, they were kicked out of the Air Force, and this <coughs> angered an Israeli journalist so much, he published his own two-page column, satirical column, quoting, just quoting, saying, this is what has happened, uh, to these pilots, we've received a letter explaining why we had to do this, and this letter is from someone we don't know. <coughs> Adolf Schickelgruber is his name, which was Hitler's real name, Schickelgruber. And he published everything in his column from Mein Kampf. <coughs> everything that Hitler had said on the necessity to kill people, the necessity to get rid of the vermin in our midst. An attack on you can imagine who, which was put in the paper. Everyone believed it, it was reprinted till the Israeli Foreign Office realized and said, you know what's going on, you know who Gruber was. And then they sacked this guy. This atmosphere is now receded. Because the way the Israelis are behaving and their regimes, and this is the most savage, semi-fascist government with actual fascists in it, is such that it's frightening people, basically. And all the United States and its allies do is put pressure on the Qatari government saying, we want you to stop Al Jazeera. <laughs> Whether, this is democracy. We don't want any opposition. Stop demonstrations. Stop people using art studios, locations, if they show any support for Palestine. <laughs> And one, a friend of mine, uh, who is now dead, a very famous poet, called Hassan Kanafani, who was killed by Mossad, <laughs> left behind many things for us. And I read this because this is very important for maintaining our solidarity movement, our anti-war movement. This is what Kanafani wrote after the second Intifada, no, before <coughs> after the second Intifada. All your armies, all your fighters, all your tanks, and all your soldiers against a boy holding a stone, standing there all alone. In his eyes, I see the sun. In his smile, I see the moon. And I wonder, I only wonder, who is weak and who is strong? Who is right and who is wrong? And I wish, I only wish that the truth has a tongue.
Our solidarity with the Palestinian people, our marches, is part of that done. And which is why, as long as the Israelis occupy, as long as they bomb Gaza, we have to be there. It's not a huge <coughs> demand on us, because we're suffering nothing as you know, anything comparable is to come out and march on the streets. Um, so, so powerful. Um, a, a quick reminder that all the speeches today have, have been filmed uh, and videos will be up on Stop the War website so you can find them again and look through them if you want to pick some quotes out from them. It's a useful thing to do.